Hey there, this is Mr. Young, and I'm going to take you through some examples of figuring out the charges or oxidation numbers, as we call them, as we enter the world of redox. Okay, so these are the rules for charge in picture form. And remember, we're, uh, you're going to see the term oxidation number a lot. That just means the charge on an atom or an ion uh, that's in a compound. Okay, so oxidation number means charge. I'll be calling them the charge a lot uh, today. So basically, well, the first rule you need to remember is free elements have a zero charge or a zero oxidation number. Free element is any element that is just by itself, only with itself, like O2 or Cu copper or K potassium or Br2. If it's only with itself, it's a free element and the oxidation number or charge is zero. If you look over here in group one, all these guys have a charge of plus one or oxidation number of plus one. These guys in group two always have an oxidation number or a charge of plus two. You can see it in the top right corner of each of those element boxes, okay? Oxygen is almost always gonna be negative two. In fact, negative two is the only oxidation number or charge that they write there. There are some weird occasions where it's something different than minus two. You can just think of oxygen as being always negative two. Hydrogen is almost always gonna be positive one. And I would say 99% of the problems you will deal with, hydrogen will be a plus one charge or plus one oxidation number. Finally, the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Fluorine is always negative one. It shows as just a negative one there. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine, they are often negative one. That happens a lot, okay? But occasionally you might have to puzzle out a different charge. And that's what we're talking about. When we get to the rest of the periodic table, basically everything else that's in a compound, you have to do a little math. It's like little puzzles and everyone loves puzzles. So it's like a little puzzle trying to figure out some of the other charges or the other oxidation numbers, okay? So let's try a couple of these. Here's an example. NaCl, well, sodium is always plus one. And Cl, well, let's see, the way we figure these out is that the charges for a compound have to add up to zero. So plus one from the sodium, that means chlorine must be a minus one. Chlorine can have a bunch of different charges, but in this case, chlorine must be a minus one because sodium is always a plus one. Plus one and minus one add up to zero. We figured out sodium, we figured out chlorine. What about LiBr? And what about Ca? Take a minute, see if you can figure out the charges. Look in your periodic table. Okay, Li is always a plus one. And bromine can have a few different charges, but in this case, bromine has to be a negative one because positive one and negative one add up to zero, and the compound has to have a charge that adds up to zero. Ca, when it's on its own, is a free element. Free elements have an oxidation number of zero, okay? Let's try these ones. There's uh, a little bit has been done for you, like Na2O. There are two sodiums. Each sodium has a plus one charge because sodium is always plus one. The oxygen, whatever charge it is, has to add up to zero when you combine the oxygen and the sodium and another sodium. So two times plus one, plus whatever the oxygen is, has to add up to zero. <clears throat> and in this one, CaBr2, one calcium plus two bromide ions all has to add up to zero. All right, think about it a little more, see if you can figure out those charges. Here are the answers. Oxygen has to be a minus two, plus one and plus one, and minus two adds up to zero. Calcium is always a plus two. That means each bromide or bromine must be a minus one charge or a minus one oxidation number, okay? Then the plus two, minus one, minus one adds up to zero. And remember, Br2 is a free element. It's bromine just by itself, only with bromine, so the charge or oxidation number is zero. All right, here are some more. Give these a shot, hit pause. All right, here are the answers. Lithium is always a plus one. That means in this case, chlorine has to be a minus one in LiCl. Now, LiClO2 is a little more tricky. We know Li is a plus one. We know oxygen is almost always a minus two. So we've got a plus one from the lithium and then a minus two and a minus two, that's minus four from the oxygens. So that means chlorine in this case must be a plus three. So we, we know the lithium. We're pretty sure of the oxygen. And so we use those to figure out what the chlorine is going to be. LiClO3 works the same way. We know the lithium is a plus one. We can assume oxygen is a minus two. There are three of them. So we got a plus one, minus two, minus two, minus two. That minus six and plus one will be balanced out 
by having chlorine be a plus five. Now, plus one, plus five, and minus six all add up to zero. So again, by knowing the lithium and the oxygen, we can figure out the chlorine. Finally, Cl2 has to be zero because it's a free element. Got a couple more here. Hit pause and try them. Here we go. Magnesium is always a plus two. That means each bromide of the two bromides or bromides, bromides in there, each has to be a negative one. Plus two, minus one, minus one adds up to zero. O2 and Mg are both free elements. They are an element by itself. MgSO4. We know magnesium is always a plus two. We're pretty sure oxygen is almost always a minus two. So that's minus eight from the oxygen, plus two from the magnesium. That means the sulfur has to be a plus six for the whole thing to add up to zero. Again, we know the magnesium and we're pretty darn sure of the oxygen. That means we can figure out the sulfur by knowing the whole thing adds up to zero. Here are a couple more, hit pause, give it a try. Here we go. Okay, Fe can be a couple different charges, but oxygen is almost always a minus two. So if oxygen's a minus two, iron must be a plus two in the compound FeO. O2 and Fe by itself are both free elements, so they are zero. And then in this case, notice we got Fe2O3. You could think of a backwards drop and swap kind of situation, okay? Iron is gonna be a plus three, sorry, oxygen is gonna be a plus three by bringing the three up here. Iron is gonna be a minus two by bringing it over here. But you can also think of it another way. Oxygen is always a minus two. We got three of them, minus two, minus two, minus two. That is up to minus six. The iron, there are two of them. And the iron charge could be a plus two or a plus three. Look in your periodic table. Iron can be plus two or plus three. In this case, the iron has to be a plus three because there are two of them. Plus three and plus three adds up to positive six. Minus two, minus two, minus two adds up to minus six. The whole thing adds up to zero. So the iron must be a plus three, the oxygen must be a minus two. All right, whoops, uh, here are a couple. Give them a try, hit pause. Okay, here are the answers. Potassium on its own is a free element, has to be zero. KCl, potassium's a plus one, the chlorine has to be a minus one. KClO3, we did one, I think maybe I already did this one. Potassium's a plus one, Oxygen is a minus two, minus two, minus two. That means chlorine must be a plus five because the whole thing has to add up to zero. Again, we know potassium, we know oxygen, so we use those to figure out what chlorine has to be. KClO2, we know the potassium, we know K or potassium is plus one. We know that these two oxygens are minus two, minus two. So we got a plus one, minus two, minus two. We need a, the chlorine to be a plus three to balance the whole thing out to have it all add up to zero, okay? Thanks for, whoa, we got one more. Okay, give this a shot. This is the last one. Hit pause. Okay, here we go. Potassium by itself is gonna be a free element, that's zero. And calcium by itself on the far right is gonna be a zero. Okay, free elements are always zero. CaCl2, potassium's a plus two. That means each chlorine must be a minus one. And then in this case, we've got two KCl. You can ignore the coefficient in the front. It just means there's two of the whole thing. In this compound, KCl, potassium is a plus one, chlorine is a minus one, so we figured out all the charges. All right, thank you for watching.